My name is Paul Walshaw. I am the assistant producer at Mind the Gap Bid Company. I have learned disabilities and cerebral palsy that I'm both mild and moderate. Um, I'm going to do a self uh, description. So I'm a white, middle aged, 30 um, year old man with curly hair. Glasses. I've got a purple, yellow, and black and white top on, shirt on, um, black trousers, and uh, black shoes. Uh, my hair is a bit quirky, a bit like me. Uh, and I'm going to introduce uh, my guest. Hello, um, I'm Liam. Um, I'm also an actor with Down syndrome and also a member of my Gap. Um, and today we've had the privilege of watching uh, Tommy Jessup goes to Hollywood. Um, and we want to thank the BBC for giving us a, a preview of the uh, film. Um, so Tommy Jessup is an actor, uh, an activist with um, Down syndrome. And um, like it says in the title of the, um, in the title, he's off to Hollywood. Tommy was in Line of Duty. Um, and there's some really quirky bits about where he talks to them about that um, he got kidnapped in a show that he was in, that he got electrocuted, um, and all this. And it was just really nice just for him to just, uh, them to just label off the shows that he was in. It was interesting, though, that at the um, beginning of the show, he then states, the um, documentary then states that he has not had a lot of job opportunities after that. Um, and that's um, where we meet um, Tommy's mum, who is also his manager. And there's a close up scene of just Tommy's mum. And she says something um, really poignant around that she doesn't want Tommy to be sidelined because he has Down syndrome and that she wants him to be treated like any other actor. Now that's something that Mind the Gap keeps saying as well and a lot of actors in the industry say there's quite a bit of that. They just want to be actors. It comes on to next. Um, Tommy uh, what, got an award from, I think it was Winchester University, if I remember correctly. Um, and he states in there that the character that he wants to play in the future is James Bond. Um, and there was a lot of clapping in there because um, he had just received an award and everything. Um, so Tommy goes to his agent. Um, and this is where, for me, was one of my most happiest bits, actually. And that was because the agent didn't sugarcoat the fact of the likelihood of Tommy playing James Bond. And it wasn't that she was trying to crush his dreams or anything, but she didn't feel that he would be cast as James Bond and said that certain characters will be cast to certain, to certain roles. Um, and that was kind of um, a really poignant bit of this play on uh, this documentary um, of where it was 
the age of being very truthful and I think um, there is a lot of times where people are truthful to people with disabilities. Tommy's agent um, gave him some really good advice about um, about actually making his own show because yeah. a lot of actors will make their own shows um, especially if they're not seeing themselves being represented um, and uh, Will, his brother um, was like I don't know how realistic it was for them to suggest that which I thought was really interesting that his brother kind of doubted him at the beginning, but then he turns around and says, but with my brother, um, that he can do anything, which is a nice switch around. Um, yeah. So, that is a nice switch around, but because of the far, I could tell where his brother was coming from. And so Will is a filmmaker like Tommy is. Yeah. So Tommy's not only an actor, he's also a filmmaker as well. And in the show, in the documentary, you can actually really tell how much um, that they care about each other. Even when they went over to America, it was the first time that Will and Tommy had gone without his... Um, their mum. That's this beautiful bit at the end of the show, which I really loved, of where um, his mum is telling him um, all the stuff that Tommy needs. So she talks about him wanting Tommy to be independent and all this, uh, and his mum gives him a list of, uh, to Will of that all the stuff, and then Will just turns right to his mum and says, and um, what if we don't do all this? Yeah. And her mother's look on yeah. her face was just beautiful because yeah. it's like it had that timing which you know, like any mother has when they look at your kid. Yeah. Um, and it's like you dare to disobey me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but with, um. <laughs> So yeah, so that was it. That's but there's so many of those nice, refreshing yeah. moments between the brother, between both brothers, and you could tell how much they love each other. Yeah. Um. So I really found that important. There is, however, in the show some things that are triggering, in mm. my opinion. Um. There's a scene in there which is where he was christened. Yeah. Um the music doesn't also help. It's very mellow, very yeah. like feel sorry for me kind of music. I didn't like that. I felt it wasn't necessary. Um that's my own personal opinion. I don't know how you felt about that music. No, no, I, um, I do agree with you on that one because because it was slow. I couldn't like to me. Yeah. It, it was like it, it's like watching a soap opera. Yeah, I can get that. Um, um, there were another line as well in that as well. Change me if I've got this wrong, but I think the line was, "We didn't know if you were going to live or die, uh, mum and dad." Uh, used to cry at night and we didn't know if we could make you better um, now just to give in context that Tommy was born a month premature yeah. um, but the line we could uh, we didn't know if we could make you better just sounded very I understood it. I understood where she was coming from, but it also sounded very medical model about uh, yeah. trying to fix someone. I agree with you on that. Like you really like we phrased it, it was it was a better way 
that it's been replaced it for a better way because because when you see it, it it's got Tommy closed off. Yeah, you could tell that Tommy and I think even Tommy says that he um he felt emotion then. You could tell that in a way. Um but um yeah, it was that just kind of got to me. Yeah. There was also a line of where it says, um, the mum says that this could be the last generation of people with Down syndrome. Yeah. Um, and that we lose out on so much of the talent that there is. I totally agree with her on that statement. However, it's it was hard to hear. Yeah. Um and it's worried me because I know that it's happening still. Yeah. And I know that there's the um about the abortion law of um around disability and that you can have yeah. a child and for how um right up to birth and stuff. Um and so that kind of really hit home to me about if they're doing it to one disability, how many times do scientists and doctors yeah. um will also try and in inverted commas, fits us. Yeah. I think there's discussions, and I think I'm hoping that this will open up a discussion. It felt right, and it needs to be said because I think there needs to be talked about, and I think uh, there needs to be opportunity to talk about it. Yeah. But I also feel that it needs to have that space to be talked about in the right way with the right people. Yeah. Um, will a one hour show on the BBC be in the right place? I don't know. So, we've talked about the triggering stuff, we've talked about um, Tommy's life at the beginning. Now, let's talk about the film um, that Tommy wants to make. So, um just to give it out there, so Tommy wants to make a superhero film. So he basically does what every actor does. Yeah. He talks to his agent. He then talks to other. He talks to a writer um, who gives him advice because Tommy and the, the writer and this person. I've worked together on another show. Um, then he goes to talk to other people. And then the one, the only, Kit Harrington, the term, from Game of Thrones turns up in this, in this documentary. So, um, yeah, this show, had some big names in it. Um, uh, Tommy or, had got a big list of celebrities that he wanted to be in the film. So he had all these names and only one actor got back to him and that was Kit Harrington. Um, and he wanted Kit to play the baddie in this um, scene that he had written. Now, all of that great, beautiful moment, um, really nice. What I loved though, was the reason why he actually wanted to talk about his own cousin and the connection there between um, him and his cousin, but also the things that people with um, yeah. Down syndrome, the superpowers that they also have. 
um, Kit says to Tommy that he really believes that this is the time for a superhero to uh, be in a film with Down syndrome. Um, and so um, off they go <laughs> to Hollywood. So, what's your favorite moment in the documentary? So my favorite moment is when he was over there uh, in the Hollywood game. And it, it, it got woke up. And I find that funny because Tommy is just like me. Like, I, like, it, it, it's not a morning person, but I feel like that's what it does here. Um, as soon as the same picture, you have to think like you have to wake up because it reminds me of me. So I'm like, oh, I don't have to wake <laughs> I think we all feel that one. <laughs> <laughs> After watching that documentary, what did you think at the end of it? And how do you feel? So, at the beginning of it, I felt a bit patronized. When, don't get me wrong, I know she's being a mum and what we do and all that. There's certain things that you can't do and something, what you are able to do. Like, for example, the independent travelling. Yeah. Um, like, he has to stand on his own two feet. I do like that moment, but there was something there that I do not like. Thank you. What was that? Where... So there was a moment when he was on the train to get his train ticket. And then a bit before that, he had a bit of a blip where he had his hands on his head the same way I do it like, all the time. That's what triggered me. Well, there's a line, what she said there was, standing on your two feet. You see, now, that's the point where he said that he wants to change. To me, that's not a change. So, Liam, uh, you said at the beginning of the film you felt patronised. Um, can you tell me how you feel about that now? Like, how do you feel after watching the horror episode? Well, it made me feel like I lost the power of the right to the voice with people dancing girl. And people want to see the real you. Okay, so not so what you pretend to be. Okay, so do you feel that you were able to see the real Tommy? I've seen the real Tommy like down the line of, of the movie where he had a good chemistry with his brother, and then we had a bit of a moment, a funny moment, like what we were discussed with the list. Yeah. Well, what I think my question is, how do you do you feel empowered? After watching this film, so yeah, well, it made me feel like, um, to me, it made me feel like I wasn't going to say to what you did. Okay, so, um, you want to make a film or you want to make a documentary? I want to make a documentary where, um, the way he did it with his, but but without using any moments or any moments to trigger. Okay, because it might stop people not watching a documentary, but it might stop people in their talent. So my question is, for them who are watching it, I, I want to know how they feel. Yeah. And if they've been inspired by it. So I'm going to leave uh, this with Liam. I want to know what three superpowers you have like to have so with i'll just give everyone a bit of a clue to tommy's was that he wants to stop time he wants to move objects and he wants to change people's mind so my superpower will be try not to change anything about you okay but just be you I like that superpower. So just being yourself. Just being yourself. I think that's a brilliant way to end this um, review. 
Uh, this is going to be out on the BBC. Um, please do watch it. And um, yeah, give feedback. Thanks very much.